Hello everyone, Kirith here and welcome along to the Daytona 24 Hours 2021. So yes, Daytona 2021, where do we start even? So if you don't know what this race is, it's a 24 hour race in the UK. It's a karting race. I'd say it's fairly prestigious. It's, it's not the most prestigious. That would be the British 24 hours probably up at Teesside. But um, this one is at Milton Keynes, Daytona. It's quite accessible. There's two classes of carts which we're on. There's the faster D-Max two-stroke carts. And then there's the N35 four-stroke carts, which we're in kind of like LMP1 and, and GT3 cars or GT cars. You can imagine a like that. And this is our tent and this is the team. So you've got Walmid, Sam Dimlo there, the Club 100 test driver with the headset on. Next to him you've got Ryan Sandal, aka Roswell from GT Sport. And somewhere around here will be Eric Ignon, also from GT Sport, RCMBE. So our Belgian driver. And yeah, this is our nice little area. I'm leaving now to get in the car. This is the beginning of the weekend. So practice is about to get underway and I'm going to be the first driver to jump in because... I did a practice session at Daytona a couple of weeks before this and I'm the only driver really who's practiced here before. Although Ryan Sandals driven here a couple of times, not recently, but Sam's never driven here, Eric's never driven here, so we thought I might be the best person to tell if the car is okay or not. Our plan was actually to, if the car felt even slightly off, just get it in and get it tested as soon as possible. But as you're going to see me jump into our chariot here, there was a pretty big problem off the bat, so immediately... We had some drama. Uh, it's not that uh, boss there, which I gave to Marshall. It's actually the fact that the Alfano, and this was a game changer for me. So you can see on the steering wheel there, we've got Alfano, which is a data logger. It gives you live telemetry, uses GPS, uses the RPM from the engine. Quite accurate. I've done a 24 hour race before. I've done the British University Karting Championship 24 hours at Teesside. Didn't have a data logger there. This has just changed the game. But unfortunately, as I rip off the paper there, it's meant to be plugged into the engine um, through some wiring and detect the RPM. And actually, as I found out here, the wire wasn't plugged into anything at all. <laughs> so Daytona are meant to install that cable um, to the engine beforehand. There's obviously some kind of mix up, which is fine. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to notify Sam that this cable isn't plugged into anything, which is a bit of a shock. But this Alfano here, let me tell you more about it. It's a data locker. Sam uses it for his son. Um, I think it's Elliot Alt Karting. He's a very fast young carter. And when you're doing two-hour stints, as we were all doing, we were all doing three lots of two-hour stints, it can get quite repetitive. And being able to go over the line every lap and see what your last lap time was and aim for something each lap was huge for me mentally. It really did make an absolutely massive difference the way I was able to approach the race. So still fixed up the cart here. You see the top right, I think that's Charles Graham. who owns Daytona, has done for the last 30 years or so. He basically puts on this event. And he was interested in my camera. Let's let's take a listen in. Is that a GoPro, yeah. okay. Oh, and it would be rude of me to not say, if you are enjoying this video, please do leave a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about the race. If you're enjoying this kind of content, I'd love to know. I really want to make more of it. So yeah, some heavy words. <laughs> to be honest, I, I didn't really want to have the camera on my helmet for this race because we were doing two hour stints, that's a long time in the car, and that's just a, an added weight on my neck going around the fast corners here at Dayton and Milton Keynes. So I did put a mount down there on the car, but then it seemed a bit too bumpy. So but anyway, here we go. We've got some footage from me heading out here in practice as so they start up the car. You can see the, the pit lane is now empty. So we did lose a few minutes, but no, no real harm done. We had 100 minutes in the car between us. Some of the faster teams didn't even use all the packs in area because they wanted to save their fuel. And we wanted to use all of it to get acquainted with the track. And we're about to head out. 
so I can show you what it's like to head out for practice in a 24 hour race just two miles an hour in the pit lane which feels very slow but I've got an MPH thing on the Alfina now so I can't really cheat as so we're going to join the track here on the exit of turn one and yeah two classes you can hear the D-Maxes before you see them with that high pitched buzzing noise of the two stroke the four strokes you can't hear um, until you see them really and yeah these are the corners that you'll recognise from my previous video as of someone going round the outside it's someone I was actually racing in my previous video at the practice session those two hairpins there very tricky corners this corner here this right hander just about I don't really want to say commitment it's not really that committal but you can take it quite easily flat this hairpin isn't too bad because the exit is downhill later on I was using all of that exit to let the cart bounce down and yeah in this practice session I was doing uh, mid 16s I think so a second quicker from my previous practice but in the race in the end I was doing low 14s so I was able to shave off two more seconds from the laps that you'll see now so I think what we'll do is we're going around the line and I'll shift to a faster lap a mid 16 lap and I'll tell you kind of where you can find even more time to get down in the low 14s or even in the 13s and the 13 here is a, is a very quick lap I think the fastest lap in the race was a was a 12 so that's as fast as you can go here we go then turn one all about keeping it flat keeping it planted this corner you can do flat out all with a little lift and then absolutely smash that curb on the right hand side it's a lot more secure for me to take this corner you don't want to go too deep because it's off camber so keep it nice and tight and then this corner i was dabbing on the brakes in this practice you absolutely don't need to do that you can just lift off and get back on the power smoothly use all of the runoff on the exit here but the other side of that red and white curb to allow the N35 to really get up to speed. This corner just want to clip a late apex like the guy ahead of me really did quite nicely. And then here again another late apex on the power as soon as possible. Use that banking on the right hand side to drop the cart back down. This is all easy flat now. This corner you want to really maximise the exit. I was breaking too late here in practice I think. Break a little bit earlier, get on the power earlier and let the cart build those revs down the straight. is an uphill exit that corner as well which does hurt you if you get a a bad entry this corner all about commitment really like it just keep it nice and flat and then try and stamp on the brakes fairly late um, but more importantly get on the power early so the cart doesn't bog down you see it bog down a little bit there for me this corner i never really worked out i was always a bit too aggressive you can see me really working the wheel there you don't need to work it that much and i was looking at the fast drive itself quite smoothly there but that's a flying lap of of milton Keynes. So you can definitely go quicker than that if you um, do those little tips like smash from the right hand side curb there, it's quite a nice curb to smash, it doesn't really upset the cart and that's how I was able to gain those extra seconds but yeah I was really enjoying it at this stage of the weekend going out 24 hours of karting to look forward to and the cart seemed really nice, I was on the radio saying yeah this cart feels good, definitely no problems with steering slight and just a beautiful track, long track, fastest laps in our class about a 1 minute 12 you can see here we're going to be catching a, a slower N35 driver and hopefully we'll be able to line up some sort of overtake that I can talk you through. This corner all about the exit. You can see I, I think I may have clipped the tie bar on the inside there but we did get a better exit and in the slip through now as well. So we're going to be building that MPH all the way around the mid part of this corner. I think about going for a move and then we are going to dive up the inside but that means I've taken that. You can hear the brakes there. I felt like I was kind of on the limit that time. But I'm losing it all on the exit. Really satisfying to dive up the inside there and be late on the brakes. But um, you can just cover up the exit as well. See, I was on the radio there to Sam. And we're just going to dive up the inside. That person lets it go. It's only practice. And we're catching someone now who looks, looks to be a D-Max car. And this is quite unusual. This is like in Le Mans a GT3 catching an LMP2 so that guy ahead must have had some kind of issue with the car I think you do have a bit more variability in the two stroke engines they are inherently less reliable in the way that they work no oil going into the engine like a full stroke action it's all done in the two stroke action we think about sending it up the inside there which would have been risky but again we'll see if we can get it done on the exit so this guy ahead he is in the D-Max you can tell by the big exhaust in the back but he's really struggling he looks a bit frustrated there must have been some kind of issue there and I'll get them for test and get that sorted but yeah that's a flying lap of um, of Milton Keynes and we'd be doing lots of laps here 
over the course of the race. Now I'm coming in after my practice session, putting it on the way bridge. There was a minimum weight for the cart. We were all, apart from Eric, well over. I think Sam, Ryan and myself were about, in the end, 15 kgs over, which meant we were carrying a bit more weight, but it was what it was. We, we were never really going to win this event. We were here mainly to have fun, so not too much problem. You can see already I'm falling foul of the rules in the pit lane. Sam's ready to come in. I get out of the cart. And I get told I need to go to the end of the pit lane, which is fair enough. Although in the race, we didn't need to, but in practice, it kind of makes sense. So driving forward a little bit, just two miles an hour, <laughs> a bit congested in the pit lane. And it's a bit weird because you go out on track and you're trying to maximise every tenth possible. And then you come in the pit lane, it's two miles an hour. The driver swap is a little bit fiddly. There goes Sam in the car. Just checking his pedals are okay. And yeah, going to head back now to the tent. I thought we'd just keep the camera rolling here. While I'm getting a nice little photo of Sam. And Ryan's got a headset on that is connected to a headset on the side of my helmet. So that's why it looks like we're having this conversation. How would we hear each other? But he's wired into my helmet. Unfortunately, it didn't really work in my helmet when I was out there. It was just too noisy. But walking in the paddock like this was fine. And yeah, it's a busy paddock. You can see our tent there on the left, kind of a little bit recessive. That meant that we could keep tabs on the pit lane. We couldn't see the track from it, which has pros and cons. Here's Eric coming through the gate. He's wired in with Sam. So we were pairing up with the headset, which was quite a nice system. So you've got the pit lane on your left, race control up there. The commentary box is, is uh, further on the left. There's the reception everything the kind of circus tent in the background and then here's our little tent right here that was home for the next 24 hours quite a nice little space a little bit bigger than what we were meant to bring but we had a nice plot so we could bring a bigger awning i call it a tent and yeah we've got a couple of chairs we've got a lot of biscuits water cola everything you could possibly need for a big race and there's my Helmet I was using this weekend, first time using the Nolan, and it was absolutely fantastic. Incredibly comfy. The two hours just flew by. Didn't get any kind of cramps or anything or, or hot spots in the helmet. The new visor was good as well. So, yeah, really lucky. And then it was time to get ready for the race. You can see how many drivers there are here. There's the co commentator giving the last instructions. And I think at this point, it kind of dawns on you just how big this event is. There's Nathan in the foreground, NM1M who went on to win the whole thing, just practicing their driver swaps. So big congratulations to Nathan winning the whole thing. And I think getting the fastest lap is Usain Bolt um, getting some practice in, sprinting in like that. I wouldn't do that because if you trip on anything, then you're going to scratch your helmet. <laughs> but maybe you've got some weight or something. And here's us in the background. So yeah, we had quite a nice location here in, in the pit lane and we weren't quite on track size so you do get insulated from that constant drone of the two stroke which was nice and at this stage practice is done the D-Maxes are going out for their qualifying so there's the D-Maxes about to head out we'll zoom forward a little bit and yeah it would have been different driving a D-Max um, obviously they're, they're very similar to the Club 100 carts also using a Rotax two stroke engines similar chassis but um, a little bit more temperamental. I think there's something to be said for driving the, if, you know, the slower class and really having to maximise the speed you can get out of it and dealing with the traffic of getting overtaken. So different sort of challenge there. I think I'm going to give some thoughts of where we were at this point in the day, hopefully. Getting ready to qualify now. Ryan's going to qualify. Hope you do a good job. So yeah, Ryan getting ready to qualify as a D-Max right? This gives us a little time to analyse some of the telemetry from the Alfano. And I have to say, this is some of the most insightful coaching, whatever the word is, I've ever had in motorsport. Just the ability to 
trace your RPM, so your throttle really, and your GPS data, so the lines you're taking against another driver, and for me against faster drivers, against the Club 100 test driver in San Dinley. And uh, we all know about Ryan's speed from GT Sport, but very fast in, in cars as well. And Eric Lincoln on a very fast driver. So three fast drivers than me. To be able to see the temporary was, was just incredible. Very lucky to be able to do that. And I think that's where I was able to gain most of my time, was to see where I can go flat, see where I need to break a bit earlier, which can be a bit counterintuitive, see where to take a wider line on the way in. I absolutely love this stuff. It's going to be weird going back karting and not having that sort of data, to be honest. So... If you have an opportunity to use one of these, I thoroughly recommend it. But yeah, now it's Ryan's time to go out and qualify in the N35 car. The unmistakable helmet of Russ Waltz is a one-to-one -one copy of what he uses in GT Sport. And 21 carts in our class. The first eight or so carts looked to be on another level. Um, a number of them I, I think had practiced quite a lot here. But Ryan qualified in P10, so pretty good. And you can see him there in the unmistakable helmet and here we go for race start on the outside Ryan a very good karting driver and loves being in the mix so he was able to make a couple of positions off the line and there we go going over the line and this is going to be the next 24 hours zoom ahead to the next lap and we're just going to pick up Ryan as he goes around this hairpin there he is going around the outside three wide there of that and where you really want to be now is on the inside where he is so he's picked up a couple of positions it's a great stuff from Ryan. But yeah, 24 hours to go of this race. It's, it's kind of a weird feeling. They're so long to go. Here's me getting ready to do my stint. Getting ready for two hours. Not much you can do other than relax. And yeah, in the pit lane. Getting ready to go. And I was excited. I'd, I'd unlocked some pace in practice. And I'd seen the telemetry. And I just couldn't wait to get out with that alpha final on the car. And just every lap, try and better my lap time. And really get into those 15s was my aim so doing a 16.4 i think in practice and i was pretty confident i could i could take half a second off just basically by not breaking into that right hand to hairpin should gain me a load of time because that's going to save me from bogging down the car so you see sam's here on the radio it looks a bit weird that headset because i snapped it <laughs> so it's a bit of a jaunty angle on top but yeah i could hear sam in the pit lane as soon as i went out the wind noise or whatever was just too much and it was useful to have in the pit lane. But yeah, feeling good. Body is good. Mind is good. Getting ready for the first two hours. It's a nice place to be, to be honest. Um, at this point in the race. You can hear Double Dash Motorsport Media on the commentary. So we'll zoom ahead now and wait for Eric to dive into the pits. There he is, coming out in the red seat. Waiting for him to grab his insert and I'm going to jump in. There we go, put my insert in. And because I'm a bit taller than Eric, got to adjust the seat and the pedals. He's checking my um, strap on the side, so moving the seat back. Didn't move the pedals here. And weirdly, I'm not going to dive out of the pit landing onto the track because when you do a driver swap and you want to fuel, you have to do the driver swap here and then dive into the fuel bay. We didn't do that in the first swap. And we got a sin bin for it. Um, and then we got a speeding in the penalty. Speeding in the pit penalty, so... <laughs> It didn't go well for us there, but um, this time it was okay and I'm diving up track, having a battle with this guy who was a little bit lighter than me, but um, I think I was a little bit better through the corners, so I had a good dice with him, and yeah, diving into the two hour stint, it's a long time in a car, doing anything for two hours is a long time, here's me going down to the back, down the back straight, and yeah, you kind of have to settle in to be honest, um, there's a long time to go, you can't treat it like a stint, you'll just burn yourself out. But like I said a few times, just seeing your lap time every lap on the car was absolutely huge and it kept me really fresh. And to be honest, the two hours absolutely flew by. Now, unfortunately, pretty early on into the two hours, I developed a... I could feel it was a blister on my palm on the right hand, which is unusual. I, I normally get blisters up the side of my thumb when my thumb sort of meets my hand, but this was firmly in my palm, so I could feel that... Um, not ideal, but carried on. It was only when I got out of the car I saw the extent of it. We'll see later. Nice little drag race here. Um, an N35 up the inside. You can see how much lower that guy is in the car, which may make a little bit of difference um, for wind resistance. I sit on an insert, which puts me quite high up. But yeah, nice drag race. He's got the inside, so he'll get that corner, the left hand. But here's me getting over the start finish line. 
You can see how straight my leg is. I, I didn't really get my seating position correct. That is way too straight in the leg. I should be quite a lot more bent. That did cause me and Sam to cramp up a little bit. Yeah, as the um, sun began to, to set, still going round, and managed to set some 14s in there. So one and a half seconds quicker than my practice. I was absolutely buzzing with that. Coming in off the Weybridge, just two miles an hour. Um, into the pit lane and we'll see how elegant the pit stop is I'm, I'm going to guess not very elegant here we go Sam's waiting to get in there we go jump out get Sam when heads he jumps in not too bad there we go Sam's on his way blocked someone here unintentionally whoops my bad so there we go first stint done um, it was tough two hours the great thing about driving in this team is we have an alfano which is a digital display and it shows you every lap time when i came for my practice two weeks ago i was doing one minute 17s in three race practice i was doing 16.5s then in the race i was doing 50s there's a couple of laps where i dropped into the 40s i was really happy with that so if next in the night i can do a few more 14s that would be really good um, did get quite a big blister so I'm trying to wrap that up. Like it's not that painful, seven. it's just a bit irritating having to try and stay like that. So yeah, we'll, we'll yes, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to be in the car next course, 1 till 3am, so. which is fun, a bit we like iRacing. And there, conditions fun. should be a little wow, bit faster, the track will be cooler and everything like that. So and just, uh, yeah, it should be good. In. Looking forward to that. And then tomorrow, do my last stint. At the moment, we've got Sam on track, Club 100 tester. He's really fast. He's in the low 14s at the moment. Um, Eric and Ross would have dropped into the 13s, so that's kind of where we are at the moment as a team. But yeah, really enjoying it. Hope you are too. How's the race going, Ryan? It's all right. How was your stint? My stint was good. The pit stop wasn't, but the stint was all right. Yeah, we did three pit stops for the past of Yeah, so did a bit of speed in, but we, we ignored that bit. But you qualified P10. Yep. And then you were really close to the pack ahead. Yeah, so how I think I gained a few at the start and then dropped the back the ones that I'd gained through being cheeky at the start, I think. And then, yeah, but you're having a really good battle with a guy with like a blue and yellow helmet. I don't know, he's probably behind me. He was, he was behind you for a lot yeah. yeah, when I say battle, he was funky. There, there was a guy, there was a guy apparently who was right on my tail for like the last half of the scene that Sam kept telling yeah. me, I had no idea he was there. But I think he was just using you, he yeah. was just chilling in your slip. That's just rude, isn't it? Using me, yeah. Unfortunately, we have a red flag right now because it looks like. There's a bit of hit and run at the last one. <laughs> hit and run. Well, no, obviously he's <laughs> he was crossing the road and he got absolutely. Obviously moved. he's been hit, but there's no carts near him. So yeah, but they would have left the scene of the crime. Exactly. You don't, you don't stay near those. I reckon he's suffering from a blister in the centre of the hand. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll push it. <laughs> is, he ri is that suit ripped or has he got it over his arm? See how it's come off his arm? That looks ripped to me, like it's ripped the sleeve. But that guy, he's, he's got a day to be in the yeah, the guy said that the guy said there's um, you got another guy hit him out and he got T-boned by two people and like another guy got cannon off into the barrier, so yeah. I always find it funny when you've got people, you see how he's screwed but how he clearly jumped on the brake, spun hard. Unless they yeah. turned. <laughs> yeah, that's one for the CV. Cool. You are oh, you missed there's a great yellow flag at the top. One Yeah, just letting the video do the talking there. There's a red flag situation at the moment, all the carts on track are stopped. That's a train going past, not a uh, not a rogue D-Max. And yeah, the sun is setting. Sam's out on track. Pretty soon all four of us will have done our stints and we'll know where we are. I think out. at this stage we're about P12 or P13. So pretty much in the, in the middle of, of our class, which isn't too bad. And yeah, what a magical time just to be out and in a 24-hour race, just chatting and just really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and this is always a really nice time. Sunset and sunrise at a 24 hour race is, is amazing. Heading into the night, and I didn't get too much footage, so this is Ryan going around there, and absolutely smashing it in the night. I think he's going very, very fast. And this is what the safety car looks like in karting. 
see if you're unusual. And this is me in the sin bin. Um, I span under a yellow flag um, trying to irritate someone, which wasn't sensible. So that was me in the sin bin. But yeah, during the night, you know, strange things, strange things happen. So always important to get through the night. And I went to bed for an hour, I think at 6am. So 6 or 7 I got some sleep. And this is me driving at about 9, I think. So 9 in the morning. Here's Nathan going through the last corner. This is the corner I never really worked out. I, I, this is me now following Nathan. You can see how much I'm working the wheel here and diving it in. I, I think I could be a lot smoother there. But yeah, phew, through the night and now into my last stint. So just on a debrief, just finished my stint. Here's a judgment call. Uh, my oh, last Ryan's stint. Sam's now in the car for two hours to the end. Ryan's all done as well. Eric's all done. Uh, I think we're P12 at the moment, the moment but I reckon it will be not possible to get some more positions, so we'll see. Um, my middle stint in the night was just really bad, just for yeah, lots of reasons, being slow, yeah, spinning, this is so this is the bit um, the my hand, it. my thing was getting a bit worse. But this morning with the sun out, just really nice stint and that was my fast one of the day, so shame I couldn't have done that in the middle stint and in my last stint really gone for it, but maybe about that way around. But yeah, been good. We haven't had any big dramas, we had a couple of sin bins. I fell out of the car with a dismount barrel roll, but otherwise we've actually, I think we've looked after the car quite nicely. Interesting to see what time Sam can do now. He'll want to get the fastest lap from Ryan, that 12.9, so we'll see. But yeah, good fun. One hour to go now, last hour of the race, 23 hours done. Sam is in the car. We've all done our stints um, and it's just Sam to go. He's, we'll try and find him on track for you. He's in a battle. Here we go, so this is Sam. He's in this battle here, but the guy behind is trying to unlap himself. And basically Sam can go quite a bit faster if he wasn't being hassled like this. But it's quite a fun battle here. For my stint in the night, I had a really bad night stint. I was slow. I got a penalty for being too aggressive. Um, the thing on my hand was opening up. But this morning, my student was a lot of fun. I was doing my fastest laps, low one, at one minute 14s, which if you told me yesterday I'd be doing low minute 14s, I'd be very happy. But I'm disappointed I couldn't do that at night and then in this stint, try and push on from there. But it's what it is. Good to end on a good stint, I think. Um, but yeah, one hour to go. We're currently in P12. We are catching P11. They're a lap ahead, but there's an hour to go, so as they say, anything can happen. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying this. This is real life motorsport. Um, it's absolutely crazy at night when you're waiting to go in the car. It just looks insane. It's like joining a unlit motorway that's completely full. But as soon as you get in, you're just in the groove. Here's Sam again coming round. This is the battle. It's the guy behind trying to unlap. And it means Sam, I think, is in the 1 minute 14s, but he can. He can do really low 1 minute 13s. Um, but it's like a fun battle anyway. But yeah, first time I was able to actually overtake some people, follow some people. It was good fun. Just wish I could have done it in the night, but that's racing. But yeah, hope you're enjoying it. Hi everyone, I thought I'd take you to what I think is the most interesting corner at Daytona Milton Keynes. It's a corner I enjoy the most here. It's a very, very, very tricky corner and I'm going to explain why. It goes on to the longest straight on the track, all the way down to the pit end of the, uh, the track where the race control is over there. At the end of it, doing about 43 miles an hour for me, I'm sure the, the quicker drivers go a bit faster than that. It's an uphill exit from this corner. You've got this banking on the outside, you've got a tyre barrier here and you've got the tasty inside curve. Also, the entry is a bit kinked. It's not really a straight entry. There's so much going on here, but ultimately, it's all about the exit speed here. So it's not about slamming late on the brakes and then getting it turned in. It's about being smooth and carrying the momentum, and I really like that as a challenge. There's actually a tie barrier just here off the exit, and every lap on the Alfano, I was looking at my revs, trying to get the most revs as possible by that stage. But if you're coming, I'm sure you enjoy this corner. It's really tricky. I didn't work it out in practice. I think I kind of worked out somewhat in my first stint, but I'm still losing time to the really quick drivers. Um, and you can gain and lose so much time on this corner all the way down the long straight. 
So yeah, there's some on-site commentary from the race, and this is pretty much the last hour or two of the race. Sam is out on track, and I was looking at that corner, and then, yes, there's the winner, Nathan's team. Big congratulations. Absolutely huge to win a 24-hour race, and it was really close between the front two. I think there was about, for a long way through, only about five seconds between it. It was absolutely insane. There's Sam getting out of the car on the right-hand side, so big congratulations, Nathan. But yeah, I think for us, you know, we made it through. We had a lot of fun. We finished, I think, 10th or 11th in our class at halfway, which isn't too bad. There's Sam getting out of the car. And this is the co-commentator um, at Daytona. <laughs> I disappeared at 10 o'clock last night. I was sick of the sound of my own voice and probably some of you were sick of it. He was a real character and I think, to be honest for me, he massively lightened the mood. So fair play to the co-commentator. He was really in his element of, and absolutely superb country by Double Dash Mix Sports Media as well. But yeah, I'm going to wrap up this video with my thoughts live from the Pizza Hut in Milton Keynes, which I can thoroughly recommend. Here we go. So there we go. That's the end of the Daytona 24 Hours 2021. Really, really enjoyed it. Great stuff by Daytona. I can't criticise anything they did, didn't put a foot wrong for me. As far as it went in terms of my students, my first my practice session was doing 16.5s. Looked at some telemetry. First time. Souped up really. First time that I've ever looked at car team telemetry like the RPM and the speed. Really, really helpful. So my first year I was doing that went down to 15.5s, which I was quite happy with. That was my aim for my previous video was to get into the 15s here. Then my middle stint in the middle of the night, one, two till four a.m. Really bad stint. I was really slow. I got a black flag for being too aggressive. I was trying to overdrive the car. It was just, it, it wasn't good. But then my last stint this morning, from ten a.m., was a really good stint for me. I was doing fourteen point threes. So considering our quali was a thirteen point seven, to be half a second off my quali time. I was really chuffed with that. It's just a shame I couldn't have done that in my middle stint and then in my last stint really pushed it. But yeah, we finished, I think, P12 in the end in our class. We qualified P10, so kind of around there. Didn't have any big mechanical issues. We had a couple of black flags. Big congratulations to Nathan. He won the whole thing, and then won ever for GT Sport, coming first in the 35 class. But yeah, really fun event. Hats off to Daytona. The commentary was great. You had Andrew Mather doing the kind of Murray Walker commentary, and it had this absolute character doing what can only be described as the colour commentary <laughs> but he made a few people laugh he was very dramatic about everything but he was completely his element which I thought was good fun but yeah thanks also to Sam Walmid Eric Mignon and Russell as well Ryan Sandal I'll put their links to their channels in the description below you can see their videos from the event Sam, Sam did a video in the middle of the night to keep himself busy which is quite cool but yeah I really enjoyed it I hope you did as well we're going to definitely do more real world content like this in terms of me for the karting I'm really happy with the last stint getting in those low four teams. Something kind of clicked with me with the car. I think recently in karting, I don't know if recently is the right word, but I've tried to be too aggressive. I try and really stamp on the brakes, be really aggressive with the turning. And that's not really how I feel comfortable driving. And I don't think it's the fastest way to drive a lot of these cars. So my last stint, I was trying to be as smooth as possible, use all of the roads, keep the revs up and I was just really enjoying it whereas in my nighttime stint I was trying to stab on the brakes really be aggressive on the throttle and it just wasn't working so yeah that's interesting really want to work on that I'll be down at Daytona of Sandown Park I think a few times try and work on that technique because I think that has kind of unlocked a bit more pace for me the telemetry was key in that but yeah I hope you enjoyed it do feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you have I hope you enjoyed the video I'm shooting it now I presume if you're watching I would have managed to edit the whole thing which should be fun but thanks to everyone who's involved, thanks to the camera people who've been holding the camera, always appreciated, and all the teammates, really enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.